in this module we shall explain pricing of risk in islam what is the islamic stance on pricing of risk and this would be quite a bit in detail can the risk be sold for a price this is a question which we have asked even in the previous module to answer this question it is important to take into account certain points about risk number 1 for example risk is not recognized as a tradable item in islam so this is the starting point risk is not a tradable item in islam hence risk cannot be bought and sold on its own however on its own this is very important however risk can be bought and sold when it is part of another activity an extreme example of trading in risk is gambling and let me explain what do we mean by that one if i ask you to give me 1000 rupees and i would create a situation what is that situation i would throw a dice on the floor or on the table or wherever if 6 comes up i will keep this 1000 if anything else comes up uh, anything else comes up i will actually pay you 10 times of this 1000 so i have created this situation which is risky for me i am charging you 1000 rupees to sell you this risky situation that risky situation may generate an outcome of 10000 rupees or nothing so that is what we mean by an extreme example of trading in risk is gambling another example could be conventional insurance and this is something we would be focusing on in our segment on takaful which is an islamic version of insurance in islam risk cannot be priced and sold however risk management through risk sharing is encouraged this is why we have islamic modes of financing like mudaraba and musharaka they are actually risk sharing instruments why is risk not tradable in islam anything with a sharia recognized value can be bought and sold rented or gifted i e exchange this sharia recognized value this is a very important requirement islam does not recognize any value in alcohol for example any intoxicating substance because of that it is not permissible for muslims to buy or sell or gift alcohol to someone for consumption so it's not only that drinking of alcohol is uh, prohibited rather buying selling leasing or even gifting this is not permissible as well in islam just to exemplify just to explain if someone sends you a bottle of wine and you say that this is oh this is something i can't drink you cannot gift it to someone else a non muslim who actually can consume it 
So, it cannot be gifted either. Risk is not a valuable thing as I said earlier. It is not a valuable asset. It is not even a valuable right. Rather, it is something it is a happening or the possibility of happening something, a process, a consequence that people would like to avoid. This is something bad. Hence, risk is not a valuable asset and it cannot be traded for a price. So, this is the answer to this question why risk is not tradable. Let us see credit risk. What is credit risk? Credit risk is the possibility of a loss resulting from a borrower's failure to repay a, a loan or meet contractual obligation. That is what we call credit risk. Credit risk cannot be priced and hence cannot be bought and sold in an Islamic framework. In conventional framework, of course, credit risk is recognized and it is priced as well. But how about credit risk in credit sales? Islam does allow credit risk and its pricing in credit sales, but from a different perspective. Many scholars would say that this is not actually the case of pricing credit risk. Credit sales, okay, they allow an increase in price because the item is being sold on a credit basis, on the defer, deferment of the price basis. However, the price, this increase in price may not necessarily be because of the credit risk. On the contrary, this could be reflected by the opportunity cost of the trade and not the credit risk per se. This is what I mean. I have used a difficult language. Let me explain it in a simple kind of example. So, there is a party A, seller. There is a party B. This party A is a store. पार्टी बी उसका गाहक अब अगर पार्टी ए इस चीज को एक्स को पार्टी बी को बेच देती है ऑन क्रेडिट ऑफ कोर्स दिस सेलर हैज बॉट दिस कमोडिटी फ्रॉम अ होलसेलर फ्रॉम द होलसेल मार्केट बाय पेइंग दिस प्राइस होलसेल प्राइस एंड ऑफ कोर्स दिस पार्टी इज गोइंग टू pay this uh, PM1 to party A after certain time period. Ek mahine ke baad. Ab is ek mahine ke andar dukandar ke paas wo paise nahi hai. Aur dukandar is ek mahine mein un paisoon se karobar nahi kar sakta. That is what we call opportunity cost. Ab agar paise hote स्पॉट पे उसने बेचा होता पार्टी बी को पैसे आ जाते फिर जाके होलसेल मार्केट से वो चीज खरीदी किसी और को बेच दी पार्टी सी को बेच दी पार्टी डी को बेच दी कई ट्रांजैक्शंस उस पैसे के साथ कर ली ऑफ कोर्स बाय चार्जिंग पीएम नॉट हेयर पीएम नॉट अगेन अनदर प्राइस अगेन एंड ऑफ कोर्स ड्यूरिंग दिस प्रोसेस द शॉपकीपर is paying this wholesale price to the person or the shop or the wholesaler he is buying the commodity from. The total profit of the party A in this context would be PM0 minus PW if there are three transactions during this time period multiplied with three. Ab ye jo profit hai, ये जो पहला केस था क्रेडिट सेल वाला केस उससे ज्यादा भी हो सकता है उसके बराबर भी हो सकता है एंड इट कुड एक्चुअली बी लेस देन दैट वन दीज पॉसिबिलिटीज 
three possibilities justify pricing of risk in a credit sale and not the credit risk per se. Mujhe umid hai ki ye delicate difference aapki samaj mein aagya hoga.